zum Zelle Grünen. Zum Zelle Grünen. Hey, thank you. Oh, top pouch. Top pouch, small pouch. Might be a gift card in there. Little pocket inside one of the top pouches. Got it? Give him one of those. There's there's five there's five dollars on there. Oh, oh hey, thank you. All right, God bless, God bless you. You guys are just seeing the sights or what? No, we're up here sharing the gospel with people. Oh, what, what? I, I was trying to read it, but you know what I'm saying? I don't have my glasses. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a gospel message. It, I know, I don't have my glasses. Oh, okay. Well, here. <laughs> read it. You mind if I read it to you? Yeah. Okay. My name's Tony, by the way. Uh, my name is Wendell. Wendell, good to meet I'm you. Matt. Yeah. Nice to meet you. So, William Tendell, the father of modern English language, described him this way. He is our redeemer, deliverer, reconciler, mediator, intercessor, advocate, attorney, solicitor, our hope, comfort, shield, protection, defender, strength, health, satisfaction, and salvation. The man about whom Tyndale spoke, Jesus of Nazareth, once asked one of his followers, a man named Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are the Christ. Today, if you ask people, who is Jesus, you'll get many different answers. In the end, regardless of what you've heard, regardless of what kind of Jesus you formed in your mind, Jesus will either be your savior and advocate before the Father, or your judge with the Father. The Bible says, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. And there is only one lawgiver and judge, he was able to save and to destroy. I want to get out of here. When you die, you will stand before God to answer for your life. God, the righteous judge, will judge you according to his perfect moral standard, the law that he has written on your heart. Do not lie, do not steal, do not lust. Do not covet, do not hate, do not take God's name in vain. If you have broken God's law, and everyone has, he will find you guilty, with your punishment being eternity in hell. Your only hope is for Jesus, the God-man, to save you from the wrath of God. God the Father sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to earth, fully God and fully man, yet without sin. He voluntarily shed his innocent blood and died on the cross, taking upon himself the punishment you rightly deserve for your sins against God. Three days later, he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. Who do you say Jesus is? Repent and believe the gospel today. Right, thank you. So who, who do you say Jesus is? I don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't uh -huh. know who he is. Okay. I mean, I, like you said, uh, where did you say that at? Um, um, Jesus, the one you, you call Christ, right? I'm, I'm sorry, your first name again is? Wendell. Wendell. So, Wendell, what do you... Yeah, what do you, Jesus is your Savior, right? Can be, yeah. Right, right. So, so what, what do you think is going to happen to you when you die? When I die? Yeah. What do you think, what do you think happens next? I don't really know. Okay. I mean, That's most of the time, most time I die, baby, you know, you... Well, most times, you know what I'm saying, they got like uh, cryogenics, they have like other things, like for your insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? They have like other uh, forms of uh, mummification, right? Uh, what do you think happens to your soul? I, I don't know what a soul is. Okay, all right. I thought maybe it was like the heart or the spirit that way. We, okay, well, spirit's we, another way to put it. I mean, yeah, the spirit that way. Uh-huh. Where? We're amongst each other. You know okay. What I'm I thought maybe we were all one, one uh, entity, right? But I, I see him, right? Mm -hmm. and as an individual and one mind, one body and one soul, right? Well, all together. Uh, we're, we're not. We're individual souls. We're individual bodies, individual minds. What we have in common is that we were all created by the same God. You, you and me, we're different people. Um, how old are you, Wendell? 43. Okay, I'm 52. Okay. So I'm just a little older. We're, we're different people. We might have different backgrounds. Um, obviously, you and I look different. But you and I have the common bond that God is our creator. There, there ultimately is only one race, and that's the human race. 
man has created a difference between uh, people of different shades, different colors, because of man's sin. But you and I, Wendell, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see color. I see a man who was created in the image of God like me. And the other thing we have in common is that God has written his law on our heart. He's given us a conscience. Right. You and I, uh, just like you and I are from the same creator, both created in the image of God, you and I both were given a conscience to know the difference between right and wrong. Okay. You and I both know it's wrong to lie for the same reason. God created us, and God is not a liar. We, we know it's wrong to steal. Same reason. We were created in the image of God. God is not a thief, and so on. And so every time we violate our conscience, every time we sin against God, break the law that he's written on our heart, we're calling God a liar, a thief, a blasphemer, an adulterer, a fornicator. Uh, we're calling God something he's not because we love ourselves and we love to break his law because of our sinful nature. Well, I didn't think God lived by the same law as us. Well, God is the lawgiver. No, what I'm saying, I didn't think he lived by the same law as us. Well, so he wouldn't have been an adulterer. Right? No, no, you're right. Or he wouldn't have been. Right. No, he can't. We would have been. Right. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I mean, cuz that's know, what I'm on saying. On a different system, on a different scale. He's he's No, he's problem. perfect. He's another person. He's right? perfect. In fact, of course to us. Cuz you know what I'm saying? You're right. He's no, be he's there when we die. Right. He's <laughs> he's perfect. We're sinful. He's perfect. He, his law is a reflection of his character. God, lying is wrong because God is truth. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, stealing, uh, stealing is wrong. You know because God is, because God is is just. God is uh, benevolent. God uh, gives. Uh, it's wrong to to look at women with lustful thoughts because God is faithful. God is holy. It's wrong to take his name in vain because he's holy. It's wrong to it's wrong to hate another person, to literally murder in our hearts because God is love. Right? So God is perfect and everything we do to violate his law is sin. We've all done it. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of his glory. We've all done it. And so we're all in the same boat in that respect. God being holy and righteous and just, no sin can be in his presence, and he promises to punish sin. So he, he, part of our problem is this, Wendell, that, that uh, God is good, and because God is good, he cannot sin, and because God cannot sin, he cannot lie, and he promises to punish lawbreakers. He, punishes to pro he promises to punish those who sin against him. So oh, not, not against us, but against him. Against him, right. I thought, All, he doesn't live, he doesn't even live on that scale, though. Well, we but couldn't he, even possibly sin against him. Oh, no. Well, all we could do, all we could do is just anger him by, uh, well, by, by his jealousy. Remember, remember by David. liking somebody else, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, uh, have you heard of uh, King David? Not really. King David, okay. David, David was known <laughs> as the, as the greatest king. David was known as the greatest king in, in well, in, he, he was a man after God's own heart. That's you know how many kings there been? Well, that's, well, God said. Oh, you're talking about the King James, right? No, 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 not talking about a version of the said, Bible. You said effort. Yeah, the Bible says. Where does it say that? The Bible says that. Oh, the Bible. Yeah, the Bible, well, God's word. Well, then. What, what? Says that David was a man after God's own heart. He was recognized as the greatest king whoever lived. But yet David did this, right? Here's a man, here's a man after God's own heart. Here's a man uh, who's the greatest king. Here's a man who's seen as righteous. One night, instead of going out with his army to do battle, he decides to stay behind and just take it easy on his sun deck, right? And it's, it's late, um, it's still warm. He's walking out on his, on his balcony and he sees a beautiful woman bathing on the roof of her home. What was her name? Her name was Bathsheba. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And so David I saw that movie. Okay, so David David says to his servants I didn't know that was the Bible. Yeah. David says to his servants, go get that woman for me. And put his husband on So the, the, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, so he so he he lays with Bathsheba, he commits adultery with Bathsheba, and she becomes pregnant. 
And so to cover up his crime, he sends Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, one, the Bible says that Uriah was one of the top 39 soldiers in all of David's army. Basically his bodyguard, his entourage, his most noble fighting men. This man Uriah was part of that group. David tries, David tries to get Uriah, when they come home from battle, they, tries to get Uriah to go sleep with Bathsheba to try to cover up his right. crime. Right. Uriah, being a noble man and an honorable man, says, the rest of the army's sleeping in camp. I'm not going to go have relations with my wife. You're not letting anyone else do that. I'll sleep here at the king's door. Mm. Right? So, so, da so David's not able to get him to, to budge. Yeah, yeah. So David writes a note to, to the head general of the army. And he gives the note to Uriah to give to the general. Mm -hmm. And the note says, and, and Uriah doesn't read it. That's not his role. I'm to deliver this note to the general. He takes that note to the general, and the note says, I want you to put Uriah in the hottest spot in the battle, and I want you to pull away from him so that he's killed. But then how is he going to play like he's, oh, he's going to get murdered. Right. No, and and so, 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 so Uriah is taking his own death warrant. So he's not going to take care of the baby. You know? Well, right. And so, and so that happens. The general gives word back to David that Uriah is dead. David then... David then marries Bathsheba to try to make things right. Nathan, a prophet, comes to, comes to David and he says, I have a story for you, king. There was a man who owned one sheep. This sheep was like a member of his family. This sheep slept in the house. This, he loved this sheep as more than a pet. It was the only animal he had. His neighbor had many, many, many sheep. And a noble person was coming to dine with the, the man's neighbor, the rich man. And the rich man decides, I'm gonna go steal my neighbor's sheep and kill it so I could feed it to this man coming to my house. And that's what he does. And David gets furious. And he says, show me that man. That man deserves to die. He has all those sheep and he steals the only sheep his neighbor has. That man should die. And Nathan looks at him and says, King David, you're the man. Because that's what David did. David had all these wives. He has all these riches. He's the king of the of the wealthiest nation, most powerful nation at the time, on 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 the planet. He has everything. Uriah had one wife. David stole his wife. And so when Nathan said, "You're the man, David," this was this was David's prayer, and we find it in Psalm 51, and it begins this way, and it goes back to what you said: How can we sin against God? David begins his prayer by saying, against you and you alone, O Lord, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Yes, he wronged, uh, he wronged Uriah. He wronged Bathsheba. Um, he sinned in many, many ways. He was a liar. He was a thief. He was an adulterer. He was a murderer. And when he, and when he was brought to the understanding of that, he didn't say, against Uriah, I've sinned. He didn't say, against Bathsheba, I've sinned. He didn't say, against my people, Israel, I've sinned. He said, against you and you alone, O oh God, have I sinned and done what's evil in your sight. So while you and I, as men, we can wrong each other, in the end, all of our sin is against God. And because God's good, he has to punish that sin. And the punishment he's determined for that sin is eternity in hell. But the good news, Wendell, and that's why me and Matt are out here today, the, the good news is that our sins can be forgiven. But we must come to God on His terms because God doesn't negotiate with sinners. Just like a good judge doesn't negotiate with a convicted criminal. And God sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, without sin. He lived a perfect life for some 33 years that you and I can't live for 33 seconds. But even though he lived this perfect life in perfect obedience to God the Father, God the Son voluntarily went to the cross. He suffered and died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment sinful men like you and me rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. And what God commands of us in response to that is that we repent. Jesus' first sermon was, 
repent and believe in the gospel. The, what I just shared with you, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, that's the gospel. Repentance, a turning from sin, a turning from loving ourself, a, a turning from loving our sin, and by faith alone receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And the promise of God, Wendell, is that if he causes us to be born again, and through faith in Christ, we turn from our sin and put our trust in him, mm -hmm. he will forgive all of our sin. The Bible says that when God forgives, he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west, mm -hmm. and he will remember it no more. And we can be brought into a right relationship with our creator through faith in God, the Son. Not only will our sins be forgiven, but we have the promise of everlasting life with Him in heaven. Not on the basis of anything we've done to earn it, but based on the mercy and goodness and grace and love of God that would allow His Son to die for sinners like you and me. Does that make sense? All the time. Yeah. So let, let me ask you, Wendell, and I'll let you go. Is there, is there, is there any sin in your life that you love so much that you're willing to die and go to hell so that you can enjoy that sin in this life? Um, I don't know. I don't really believe in hell as a okay. place that's going to be for me. All right. Well, let, let me ask you this, Wendell. What do you think is more important, what we believe or whether or not what we believe is true? So what, what I'm saying is, if I'm living in a sin, right? Yeah. It's only heaven. You know what I'm saying? Well, Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. A place of I, weeping and gnashing of truth. I don't know what Jesus talked about. Well, I, but like I'm saying, if I'm going to live in a sin, then it's going to be my heaven all the way to the end. Well, 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 sin isn't heaven. Sin is rebellion against God. Whoever. <laughs> yeah, our, our only hope for that forgiveness, our only hope know, for heaven. I don't know what forgiveness is, but you know what I mean? Has anyone ever done anything wrong to you? They tried. Okay. You know what I mean? Did, they tried. Did you, uh, did you harbor anger and bitterness towards them? Or did, or were there times when you said, you know what? I'm going to let that go. I'm going to forgive that person. I'm not going to hold it against them. No. You've never done that? No. Wow. I've never even thought about it. Really? I don't, I don't see people, that when they do something to me, right? We got this judicial system, right? So you know what I mean? I try to uh, protect myself against those type of things. But more or less like, you know, like little things like, you know, I like him better than you, right? You invite your friend over for Sunday brunch and you invite me, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't think about stuff like that. Maybe you got, you got a whole nother plan, right? But like I was saying, if I'm living in a sin, then it's heaven. How can how can living in sin? How can living? Because you're getting what you want. Ah, but you in know what? Life. Well, okay. So I, I understand what you're saying now. I understand what you're saying. Jesus said, "What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but forfeits its, his soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul, his spirit? What's the soul? Your spirit. What is it? What do, you, what do you mean? What is it? How can, how can you lose something that you don't even know what it is? Well, we can, you can lose something. You don't have to know what something is to, to lose it. You're, you're, going to, you're going to live forever. Not physically. You know, the, if, 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 if things go well for you, maybe you live to 80, 90, 100, maybe even 110 years old. But you're going to die. And the Word of God says it's appointed once for a person to die and then the judgment. You're going to stand before your Creator to give an account for your life. And he's going to judge you according to his law. For the person who knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. The person who has received forgiveness from God, the person who has received eternal life through faith in Jesus, their, immediately, their spirit immediately goes to be in the presence of Jesus Christ, their Creator, their Lord, their Savior. But the well, day, but, I mean, uh, you know, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. Uh huh. That's not me. What do you mean that's not I'm you? not going to be in the presence of my Creator no time when I die. Who determines that? You or your Creator? I already know. I already know. 
How do, how do you know that? Because I was created by it. Right? Yes, we all were. You know what I'm saying? Because uh-huh. I was created by it. Not all of us. No, every, no, every human being was created by God. You, I don't know you like that. What, what? <laughs> you remember what I'm saying? No, I know you don't know me. I don't know you like that. Well, there's only one but creator. my creator, the one that created me, when I die, I'm not going to be in his presence or her presence or whatever it uh-huh. is until they come to the point that why they murdered me, and then they're going to come to my creator yeah. and be murdered for the death of me. No. Well, yes. what... What God? Guaranteed. What God's? That's a guarantee. All right. Fact. They're going to be murdered by me because they put me to death. It's not going to happen. Watch. It's not going to happen, Wendell. All right. Not going to happen. That's See what, end. Wendell? What you've done is you've end, you've created a God in your imagination, Wendell. I, I never created a God. You did. You just did. Wow. 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 That went south, huh? Wow, you hear, hear what he said I, I at the end? It was very helpful it was, right there it, at the beginning. Yeah, it was it was wonderful. And and then when it gets to the place of standing before God in judgment, did, did you hear what he... I didn't hear oh, everything. Oh, well, what he said there at the end is, no, 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 no. I don't know who created you. Oh. But I know who created me. And when I die, I'm not standing before him or her. He's going to stand before me. And I'm going to murder him for murdering me. Oh my God! That's what he said. Oh, that is. That's what he man. said. He's, he's off, man. He is so. Yeah, but you know what? You know, you know what though, Matt? Maybe he is. Maybe, maybe he's, maybe he's not all there, mm-hmm. all there mentally. But what he articulated, right? What he articulated is the way people actually think. Mm-hmm. That that that's right. that that's the unbeliever's heart. Yep. yep. The unbeliever doesn't. The unbeliever in their arrogance, they believe. That they'll stand before God and judge God. They're they're killing God every day. Right, exactly. They murder God every day. Yeah. And and Wendell, Wendell just simply articulated what most of humanity lives. And, and our and our first thought is, wow, he must not be of his right mind. But that's the heart and mind of the vast majority of unbelievers. Wow. They're sovereign. They're the king. Right. They're going to judge God. And in the end, like he, like Wendell said. They'll murder God. Wow. I, I've never actually I've never actually heard it said like that. Wow. We need to pray for him.